Hello everybody, my name is Joshua, I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats and King, where we will discuss books, both new and old, I'll share with you pictures of my cats, I'll make you wish, they were your cats, and I'll drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. I plan to prove that today with this giant mug. You were short one video last week, it was just a busy, a busy week in general, so um, I just kind of lost track of time, didn't have... Didn't have the means of filming, editing, and uh, getting a video up as I normally would, <clears throat> but uh, should be back on track this week. So, back with the weekly wrap-up. This is for January 21st through the 27th. Uh, in this case, I have six books to talk about again, and this, looking at it, was another pretty decent week. So... Um, I'll tell you, I did try to uh, recruit some help for this video, and it didn't exactly go as planned. So I'll show you what I'm in here real quick before we get into it. All right, buddy, it's time to film. You gonna come help? You gonna come help? You gonna hang out with your brother? Come help me film, buddy. You been camera shy today? Okay. All right. Chaos. You want to help me film? Okay, you do not want to help me film. All right. Let's get a shot of you running away from me. Hmm. And we're back to Havoc. It's not the exciting content that you would typically get where it uh, came from the page, but uh, this is the life of these two. So there you have it. Yeah, as you can see, that did not go so well. Um, the boys were just not interested at all, so you just get me today. But, um, <laughs> as I said, I have six books to talk about. This time, only two physical books, one audiobook, and three ebooks. Um, so, let's go on and get into it. The first ebook was The Tell Fang Heart by L. Burke. This was the follow up to the book I read the week before, uh, <laughs> A Fang to Remember. And I really enjoyed that one. It was, it was just a, a silly, uh, very light-hearted, cozy mystery. And um, I kind of felt like I needed some of that to reset myself mentally a little, I guess. I don't know. So, jumped right into this one because I enjoyed the first one so much. But in this one, there is someone going around attacking and staking the vampires in this little vampire town. And uh, no one has died yet, thankfully, but everyone is afraid because this person has a particular... A particular type of victim that they're looking for and unfortunately our main character and one of her good friends uh, Happened to fit that description so They're on high alert as is the rest of the town. It was again just a really enjoyable time This was another four and a half as it stands for a cozy mystery for something that's lighthearted and fun and quick This is a really enjoyable one um, enjoyable enough that uh, actually the third ends up on this list later on. So in one of my previous videos I did show this next book off. I said I picked it up because I just had a feeling that it was going to be a hidden gem. And I stand by that after finishing it. This is Peter Dadar with The Goat Parade. And this was every bit as good as I had hoped it would be. Um, it kind of takes a lot of the classic horror stereotypes and tropes and puts them together, but in a very effective way. So there's devil worship and sacrificing of babies and, um, you know, witches and demons and the occult being blamed for uh, for all the calamities occurring. 
in this town. And it's just, uh, it's a really interesting book though. Um, one of the main characters is a man that has been in jail for the last 47 years. Um, and he is finally released. Uh, before he went into jail, he kind of made a deal with the devil to give him this incredible gift uh, for playing blues. And then uh, he was sent to jail for murder. Now he is released again. And basically, as soon as he's released, the devil comes to him and says, Hey, you can have that gift back. Um, or in fact, maybe even more if you'll do a little something for me. So we have that going on. We have a reporter who typically reports uh, on crime in the city, but he's trying to phase out of that. Um, it has cost him a lot over the years. It actually cost him his marriage and his child. Um, so he is ready to phase out of that. It's just taking too much of a toll mentally on him. Um, and he meets this this uh, gypsy woman that runs a little circus with her family, and she seems to have the ability to uh, to tell the future, to tell fortunes. And he is, of course, very fascinated by her. Wants to do a story on her. Wants to get to know her more. Um, so you have these two connecting, and then you also have our main sort of uh, sort of villain. His name is Warren. He's convinced that the devil has given him this task that he has to complete uh, that will usher in this era of evil on Earth and uh, supply him with a higher place in the chain, in the hierarchy of hell, essentially. Uh, very dark. And has a couple twists here and there that are just really fantastic. I loved this book. Um, it was absolutely a five star for me and I know it's early in the year but I think that this has the potential to make it on my best of 2024 list. I enjoyed it that much. So I don't honestly know if this guy has anything else out, but if he does, I will definitely be checking it out because this was awesome. This, this is what horror is supposed to be about. It feels like classic 80s, 90s horror, but the good stuff, you know, not all the crappy stuff. <laughs> so fantastic book. I highly, highly, highly recommend. Next up was my third L. Burke book of the month. This is A Midsummer Fang's Dream. Uh, which is the third in this series. Uh, I thought it was just a trilogy, but apparently there is more coming. There's another one coming out this year. This one was not as strong as the other two. This one is very much more focused on the on the romance that has been building between the main character and uh, and this other gentleman in town. And I feel like a lot of this book focuses on that which really didn't interest me as much um there is a murder that occurs and this twisty plot going on that we have to get to the bottom of um, and it was still a really enjoyable read i just don't think that it was nearly as strong as book one and book two i did still give it three and a half stars and i will still be looking forward to uh, picking up the fourth when that comes out though the fourth of the week was my only audiobook. This is Bentley Little's The Influence. There are a few things that you can almost always rely on in a Bentley Little novel. Not all of them good. Um, <laughs> one of those things is that uh, he is notorious for his terrible endings. He, he just never seems to know how to end a book properly. And as a Bentley Little fan, I understand that, I accept that, and I move on from that and read his stuff anyway. Um, this one surprised me in that I think this was actually a really good ending. I think that, um, I think he nailed it this time. And that's, that's a really, really rare thing for Bentley Little. This one was interesting also in that uh, he pushes the boundaries on some things in this book. And typically, Bentley Little goes way out 
on the sex and lewdness and the absurdity in his horror. Uh, but there are some moments in this book that uh, they almost felt like they came out of an Edward Lee novel <laughs> because uh, they were just, they were either so gross out um, or just over the top violent that uh, I, I was not expecting it honestly. Um, that said, this is definitely, I think, one of his better books, and especially because he actually nails that ending. I have to give him points on that. Um, I I did not like the characters nearly as much in this book. The main character in particular, he kind of grated on me. He kind of irritated me. It took away from the enjoyment of the book a little bit. So I'm giving this one a four and a half uh, rather than five, even though... Little really nailed the ending and uh, really surprised me in some other ways. So I don't know. This could be four and a half or five for me. Um, and on the scale of Bentley Little, this is definitely way up there as one of his better books. All right, next up is one of the strangest books that I've read in a very long time. This is Glossolalia by E. Rathke. And I don't know if that's how you say his name, but... Uh, it's the way it looks and it's the way I'm going to say it, I guess. So, <laughs> this is a really odd book. It's very short. It's only about 200 pages. Uh, but this is set up like a fable. You're following this group of wanderers uh, that almost, in ways, seemed like an Inuit tribe. Uh, they survive off of basically seal and caribou um, they are almost hunter-gatherers and that they'll build temporary huts in that but because of this group that kind of follows them uh, and routinely attacks them they're constantly on the move and one day this this odd boy shows up to their their current village um, and basically says hey my family, my people, they've all been wiped out. Would you take me in? Um, and against some of their better judgments, these people agree to do so. At first, they really love him. They're interested because he's so mysterious, so unique um, in regards to the way they live as opposed to the way that he is. But uh, things quickly take a turn. It's just, um, it's weird. There are... There's so many odd elements in this book. It is very beautifully written, but then there's a lot of profanity um, and a ton of sex. I mean, I, I, I don't know how you fit this much uh, sex and genitalia into 200 pages, but uh, there's a lot of it. <laughs> uh, that said, I still really enjoyed this. I just... It's one of those books where I don't have a clue how I could possibly recommend it to someone because I don't know anyone uh, that would just gravitate towards this and be interested in it right away, you know? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know how I ended up reading it. Uh, for some reason, it ended up on my list, and I just picked it up and rolled with it, but I don't know where I heard about it, how I came upon it. But I'm kind of glad I did. It was strange and unique and interesting. I had a hard time reading it too. So I I did give it four stars because it is rather jarring, these moments where there's this beautiful lyrical writing uh, and then suddenly you're abruptly put into a very explicit sex scene. Um, so that, that really threw me off a bit. But um, again, I gave this four stars and I think I would revisit it in the future. It feels like one of those books, the more I think about it, the more I'm going to like it. Um, and that a future read, the rating may be even higher. Um, this is one that I do want to pick up a physical copy of as well. Uh, but again, I just, I don't know how to properly, how to properly suggest it to someone. So it's really an odd duck. Um, my my suggestion to you is uh, if it sounds interesting, um, it is on Kindle Unlimited, so pick it up, read probably the first 20 pages, and that's already 10% of the book, so you'll know if it's for you or not. And then the final one that I read for this week is Darcy Coates with The Carol Haunt. And uh, so this was actually the first book 
that I intended to read from Darcy Coates. Um, I wanted to try her stuff out and ultimately this is the one that I settled on as the first book that I was going to pick up from her. And then that didn't happen so this is actually my sixth Darcy Coates um, and man I don't know I don't know what it is about this lady but I just can't get enough of her writing. Um, it is very simple and very easy to read. Um, she seems to be one of those authors that, you know, you sit down to read a chapter, you think, okay, I only have a few minutes, I'm going to read 10 or 15 pages, whatever, um, and you feel like you read 10 or 15 pages, but suddenly you've actually read 40 or 50 because it just flows so easily, you know? Um, I was just talking to Paige, my wife, about this actually, and I said, you know, I think that, I think Darcy Coates may be the author to go to if you are someone that is not necessarily a fan of horror but want to get into it because the writing is just so easy to follow. Uh, she uses a lot of classic horror elements, um, gives a lot of nods to those who do like the horror genre, but you don't need to understand or even uh, notice those nods to appreciate the writing. Um, it, her books are typically not overly scary for those that are easily scared uh, but there are some good some good uh, scares in these books and I really I think she is the author to go to for you know for for newbies to the genre if you will um, so Carol Haunt was another really excellent one for her um, another one that I, I give five stars to I anticipate picking up every book that Darcy Coates has out um, and in fact, pretty much every time my wife and I end up at a Barnes & Noble, I get another Darcy Coates. She has just become one of those authors for me that I can't seem to stay away from. Again, five stars on this one, really enjoyed it. Um, and one of those books that again, kind of surprised me with the ending. I thought it was a good, uh, good cohesive ending. A little rushed perhaps, but uh, one that I think is going to satisfy most people, especially those who are new to the genre. So, man, I can't wait to get my hands on my seventh Darcy Coates. As far as what I'm reading now, physical books, I am just starting Prohibition Works from Michael Lucas. This was one of the 50 that I needed to read this year. It's actually, it's, it's really short, um, again, about 200 pages. And I did not realize until I picked it up I thought this was a novel. Um, it's actually a collection of short stories all taking place within this time realm uh, with the same characters. So they all go together. But it's not actually one big, long, cohesive story. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I anticipate reading it very quickly. In fact, I may be done with it by the time this video goes up. Um, audiobooks, I just started Mega by Jake Bible, which I think is basically his take on uh, Meg or Jaws. Um, I've only listened to a little bit so far, I don't know, we're gonna see how this goes. I'm not particularly excited about the characters in this one yet. Um, if I end up listening to the whole thing, I will have it finished by the end of the week, so, uh, we'll see. And then for my ebook, um, I actually let Paige pick my next one from a list of five or six. And she picked The Hills of Heather and Bone by K.E. Andrews, which has this gorgeous cover over here. And this sounds really interesting. I, I try not to just read the synopsis for you guys, but I want to read the synopsis on this one because I think some of you um, are going to be just as intrigued by it as I was. It says, On the fringes of Aragal, Morana longs to exchange a life of hiding for a peaceful one with her husband, Percy. While Percy's blood gift lets him grow plants and heal broken bodies, Marana's a bone weaver, despised and feared because she can hear bones and raise the dead. Marana doesn't want to be seen as a villain from the old stories, and instead spends her time gardening, writing the stories of the dead, and fending off a spiteful chicken. Marana and Percy's lives are shattered when a group tasked with capturing bone weavers and rogue blood gifted find them. On the run and battling the elements, ancient creatures, and the loss of all they call home, Marana and Percy search for any sanctuary left in Aragal. 
Morana must choose between the call in her blood or the family she holds so close to her heart if she and Percy are to survive. Please be aware that this book contains some scenes of violence, death, depression, mentions of miscarriage, birthing scenes, suicidal thoughts, suicide, and cannibalism. So, um, the book cover is just gorgeous. Uh, and the synopsis, even if Paige hadn't picked this, I kind of wanted to read it immediately anyway, because it just sounds incredible. So that's what I'm reading now. Um, that's what I've read in the past week. And now down below, let me know what uh, you folks have read in the past week and what you're jumping into next. That is going to do it for this wrap up. <laughs> you uh, got a brief little hello from the cattens there. That's it for today. I hope you all stay safe, have a wonderful week, and most importantly, drink great coffee. <sighs> Cheers.